We all know why we're here So let me ask you a question then Why the big secret? Truth seekers, but really the true leader Keep it grooving the movement like two seaters Turn it up, we're knocking through both speakers It's time we get the truth from the big secret keepers Truth seekers, but really the true leaders Keep it grooving the movement like two seaters Turn it up, we knocking through both speakers It's time we get the truth from the big secret keepers Break it down, now can you peep it? They're deceiving all the people, let me ask you what's the secret? What's the secret? Misinformation and lies, a devious disguise yeah. They want the EMF blast until our brains is fried Oh, Hi. point their beams in the sky, oh it's a movie it's now UFO. This world is all CGI, their plot is truly foul But we're here to rise up and bring the real yeah. Time is now, true seekers, y'all know how I feel let's go, let's go. Truth seekers, but really the truth yeah, yeah. Keep it grooving the movement like two seaters. Turn it up, we're knocking through both speakers. It's time we get the truth from the big secret keepers. Yeah. Truth seekers, we're really the true leaders. Keep it grooving the movement like two seaters. Turn it up, we're knocking through both speakers. It's time we get the truth from the big secret keepers. Why the big secret? Are y'all ready? All right, everyone. I want to welcome you to Tuesday night show. Uh, you're going to be in for a good one tonight because we're going to be talking about something very special that has happened. And I don't know if a lot of you have been following with the news, but it's definitely been going down and we're going to be getting into it tonight. We're going to talk about a alien mothership that has now been detected in our solar system. Yes, I'm not lying. I'm not making this up. There is a link in the video description. If you would like to go ahead and read the article yourself, because it came from our Pentagon. Okay. Now we already know we've been talking about a lot of stuff. Uh, and the main thing is why is it here? How did it get here? We know it moved through space because it can, but the big issue is did we contact it? Or is it showing up for malevolent reasons or benevolent reasons? We don't know. But in the meantime, we're going to dig deep into this conversation tonight. So I hope you're ready. I hope you're going to keep your mind open because it works best like a parachute when it's open. We're going to give you some data a little bit. We're going to go back in a little history. And then most importantly, I'm going to share with you why I know they came here and there's a possibility because there was something that happened a couple of few years ago that wasn't all over the news. And if you weren't in tune with ufology, you probably didn't know. Yes, there was something that checked us out and it went back and told his people, and I think they are here. And we're gonna talk about that midway into the show. In the meantime, let's get with it. Let's get down. And all I have to say is truth seekers. <laughs> it is Tuesday night. I'm Roderick Martin, and I'm your host, and we're on Forbidden Knowledge TV. I'm the host of Why the Big Secret Podcast, as you should know, and we talk about a lot of things here. But in the meantime, I first want to tell you, I want to bid you good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you may be in the 24 time zones that we have this show, 
and I'm going to give you a little background information. I'm located in that jumbo state. This is where those UFOs come out to play. It's a Texas thing, y'all, and everything in Texas run pretty big. We're going to be the boldest, baffling, belligerent YouTube channel in the world, creating captivated conversations that are certain to cause controversy. Join me tonight because we're going to talk about the mothership. Yes, you heard me. The mothership is here in our solar system, and I don't think anybody's talking about it because people don't want to talk about it. Who knows? All right. That's all good. I'm going to tone it down for you because we're going to get right into our conversations. We're going to talk about a few things, and I'm excited for that right now. So, all right, you know the drill. Put the children to bed because what we talk about is not PG, and they may stay up at night, and they may be dreaming, and they may be screaming, Mommy, Daddy, Mommy, Daddy, they're here, and we don't want that to happen. Now, if you haven't fixed dinner, I got a new recipe for you. We're talking about some chili mac. That's a little macaroni and cheese mixed with a little chili. It's a Texas thing. Yep, some people do it. But it's quick, it's fulfillment, and you can use it. So, all right, let's go. I'm ready to get the show on the road. I had a great weekend. My birthday, I was down at Billy Carson's castle, treated like a king. Oh, my God, it was a great time. And we're on the road. So, let me shut this down so we can get with it. And let's rock right now. All right, so uh, hopefully all of you are tuned in for what we're going to say tonight. Uh, and definitely, it's going to be worth it for you, okay? We're going to get into some conversations, and I'm going to get into some of the detail. We're going to get right into this right now. So we're not going to play around with uh, what we're talking about. Let me get a little sip of water, because that's what we need to do. Get that hydration going for you. I got my notes right here for you, and I'm ready to, to rock and roll. All right, so it's going to start with this particular headline, and I want to kind of show it to you if you haven't seen it. And it's a bona fide headline, and here we go. Pentagon UFO chief says there is an alien mothership in our solar system. And I'm you read that, right? And I'm saying this was a headline, and it came from the Pentagon's office. And once again, an alien mothership is in our solar system. Can you say that again? I'm sorry, what? So do about that. What do we do when it comes down to uh, headlines like this and do we take them serious or not? And how are people receiving this, right? But let me tell you something. This didn't just come from one of the regular offices. It came from a new office that we have put together that's for these things. And I'll go over it for you in just a little bit because you, the taxpayers, is paying for it. But this is a true story. Now, I know some of you probably saying, why well, didn't hear it, Roderick? This is just what, why isn't it all over the news? It's because a big reason. It's an alien mothership. They're not going to put that all over the news. But then we did get a little play because we already know what happened in the past. So either way, we need to understand what is going to be going on. Now, this article uh, supposedly saying that this is an artificial mothership that tends to let out what they consider uh, probes and all that, that kind of look at Earth, which is what we would probably call UAPs and ufology. And so therefore, all of these things is happening when it gets down to it. But one of the things about it is, this is not the first time that we want to talk about something like this, but let me kind of give you a little background. Let me give you some background now when it comes down to what we want to talk about. What the heck is a alien mothership? I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you asked, and I'm going to give you some explanations right now. Do you remember the movie Independence Day? This was the alien mothership. Okay, the picture doesn't look like it's too big, but I'm going to give you some things that you can kind of put some stuff together. But do you remember that particular mothership had little bitty more planes, right? It had a lot more little, let me see if I got some pictures for you here. It had other little stuff that was probably what they call city-sized spaceships, all right? And, of course, if you played along with the movie, you know what happens next. They came, they try to open up a little can of, you know, whatever we want to call it these days, you know, you know, and it didn't work out for them. 
But at the end of the day, and I'm not saying this right now, hear me now, I'm not saying that we're about to be under some of the same situations as that movie. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just delivering some information. For some of you, if you have not been paying close attention to what's been going on. Now, I know a lot of you say, okay, Roderick, we, we know what's been happening in the past, and we know uh, what has happened with these balloons and China balloons. But here's the deal. There are four guys that or five that are well known in ufology and they all got some great quotes when it comes down to what we're seeing like Lou Alizondo. Now, of course y'all know him and he's always talk about, you know, he avoids focusing on who's behind the wheel and their intentions, but he had definitely saying that there's a lot of compelling evidence that we may not be alone. And why are we even talking about that right now? Right? Why am I having a discussion? to you about are we alone y'all should everybody in here should know right now we are not alone in this universe and if you do today still think that there is nothing else out there that we are just here by ourselves shame on you shame on you and the friends you hang out with um <laughs> eric weinstein he said we may be faking a ufo situation now if you ever heard of him he's a wealthy guy so he's saying okay we may be faking this thing and it doesn't matter I, I, I really it baffles me when we have rich people that got money and access and still want to play around with the public when they are probably buying alien technology, investing into all of the space economy and putting their money into asteroid mining and all of this stuff. And then they want to sugarcoat the situation over here to say, we may not be, uh, you know, having a real UFO situation. Now we all know Dr. Greer. Now he's the one that talks about the fake uh, invasion, that there could be a false flag invasion. He talks about, uh, but he also said man-made crafts has been used, crafts, aircrafts has been used for false uh, flag uh, operations. So he is saying some of the things that we see or saw were made by mankind. They were made by us, and it could have been a false flag operation. But what I want you to know is this, though. Make sure you hang around to this show because I'm going to reveal to you, and if, like I said, if you've been sleeping on a rock or maybe, okay, I'm sorry, I'm not going to say that. You're wide awake. Everybody here is about as awake as they can be, right? But if you've been to a point where you didn't know, several years ago, at least three, there was something big that happened, okay, and that it made everybody in the military, it made our scientists, everybody start saying, oh, sugar, honey, iced tea. It's getting ready to get real, and then from there, we formed something what I call our Space Force. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you what happened. And I believe because of that event, which most of us talking about it, most of the, the media is under circuit talking about it, is what led to this mothership is here. And I'll get to that in a minute. And you want to know about it because it is very real. And when I give you the information, you go back and check on it. You're going to be like, wow, this, this, is, this can't be happening. All right. So we still got Jeremy Corbell, right? This guy talks about, uh, you know, the silver bullet, exploiting crash aircraft technology. So he's already known. He's the one that broke the military story where you saw those go fast videos from the Navy. It was this guy who done that. Now, Richard Dolan, and if you don't know who he is, I have actually have interviewed him here on the show before already. You definitely want to go check that out. Uh, his thing in America's game, and he said they're trying to eliminate all rivals. So what he's saying is, it's all about the technology. It's all about the technology and is what everybody wants. And that is the deal. And I don't blame him. I mean, whoever gets alien tech wins, right? Whoever get uh, the information to something that can fly from here to here, put a weapon on it, game over. But what I'm going to say to this, let me say to you again, here's the deal. Back when this event happened that I'm going to be explaining to you in a little bit, this is when President Trump at the time said, you know what, we're going to implement the Space Force. Now, they call these people the Guardians, okay, and for very reason. Yes, yeah, so if you didn't know, not only we got the Air Force, not only we got the Marines, not only we got the swimming ducks, we got the Navy SEALs, we got all of those things, but we actually have an Air Force, a Space Force, and they're called Guardians, and, and they're here to protect the domain. Now, why would we have that? We're not having Space Force because we need somebody up there to defend our satellite systems. You don't think that, do you? You don't think we're just having some military people going in space because we just want to claim something. 
our military purpose is to defend the, the people of the United States of America. You know that, right? So if we place some people in space, they're there for a reason. And that reason, like I said, is going to coincide with what I think and many other people feel that this mothership has arrived and the reason it is here. So again, uh, I'll share that with you later on here in the show. So you don't want to miss that because if you have, you just don't want to miss what I'm going to tell you in a little bit. Uh, and we do know that this situation is going to cause a lot of chaos. We already know what had happened with these darn balloon stuff, right? Y'all remember that, right? And we know how people freaked out when this particular situation came up. The Chinese balloons were shot down and everybody just freaked out. They freaked out, uh, especially when the rest of them. I was getting full grown men that I know that have nothing to do with the UFO topics calling me, Roderick, Roderick, what's up, man? Are we, what's going on with this? I'm like, dude, are you okay? You know, now these are the same brothers and sisters or brothers really for me that I used to talk about, you know, UFOs are real. You crazy, you crazy. Now they're losing their mind. But anyway, if you got people like that, right? If you got people out there that really can't handle even yourself, I got a couple of ladies going to be here in a little bit. It's going to give you a little few tips on not to, uh, how to handle the stress, trauma, uh, all of this stuff. And when it comes down to this, and it, and it may help you even communicate with your friends and family who may be dealing with some things, because I think even after I share with you what we're going to share with you and why this thing is here and give you some inside information on why they're here, uh, how, why did it show up? You might need some tips from these ladies uh, coming up in a little bit. So we're going to be doing that in a minute. In fact, I'm just going to uh, just give you a little tidbit of who they are real quick. Let me bring them up on the screen. Uh, we got the greatness uh, hey. of Nikki hey. and the greatness of Nina. How y'all doing right now? Good. How are you doing? We're doing fine. I just want you, them to see your faces so they can know what they're looking forward to. Some beautiful ladies, some great tips. Uh, and I'm going to bring y'all back up after we get to the top where I reveal to them. But I just want them to stick around because you you ladies uh, have your own podcast and mental strategists, right? Is there? Am I yes. Correct? Yeah. And they're here on the Forbidden Knowledge Network and they'll be tomorrow night. And actually, I'll be their guest. And we're going to talk about some things you're not going to hear me say on my channel. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get naked, y'all. I'm going to get naked tomorrow. <laughs> And, and I'm going to have some feelings and I'm going to share and, and they're going to break it down. So I'm, I'm going to try not to cry. I'm not going to cry because I'm, I'm a full grown man. I'm not doing it. But anyway, um, yeah, so you two will be back in a little bit. And, and because I think people are going to need the information that you're going to provide after I share some of this stuff in a minute, because it, it's, it's not going to be easy for some of these folks. Fair enough? Fair enough. All right. Y'all hang around, ladies. Okay. All right. So they're going to be back in a minute. Um, and you make sure you stick around uh, to make sure you get some details from them. But I'm going to give some more information with you uh, and continue the show. Now, where I'm going with this is you do remember when those balloons uh, was out there, it was all over the news. Y'all remember that, right? All over the news, everywhere. CNN, just everywhere. You saw it. And then when those objects that was flying in the sky that we didn't know what it is, but they call them objects, but they didn't want to say there are UFOs because they're unidentified flying objects, obvious. OK, they didn't put that out there because they didn't want to alarm the public. So if you asking yourself, why ain't we hearing about an alien mothership all over the place? And you saw people freaked out about some stuff that wasn't even wasn't even UFOs. It was, you know, probably our tech technologies, those other objects, then you're going to understand. And then when I share with you why and how we got here, you're going to know why they got a lid on this one. You're going to know why there is a lid on this one. And like I said, you, you here, you here. So you are in the right place at the right time. Cause you're getting the information. Otherwise you wouldn't be here. You could have been anywhere else, but you right here right now. So you deserve to hear what I'm about to share with you in a little bit. You deserve to hear what the lady is going to help us with. But in the meantime, let me continue to give you some more back data here. This organization right here, the D, this was in 2022. The DOD announced the establishment of the All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office, better known as ARO. All right. All right. I'm telling you. So if you think this is a game, when you get up and go to work tomorrow, and when you get your paycheck on Friday or whenever you get it first of the month, the 15th, there is taxes that come out of your check, right? And you're looking at it like, wow, 
I want you to know some of it is paying for the UFO office. Now you're in the game. Now you can go back to, you know, Turkey Day or whatever. And right before you pass the turkey, you want to just say some hashtag UFO taxes and, or ask somebody, hey, do you pay your taxes? Especially if they're a non-believer. Yeah, I'm a full-blown citizen of the United States. I pay my taxes. Well, do you know that you're, you're paying for the UFO office? And just watch them do that Scooby-Doo like, oh. Yeah, and they're going to do it. And in fact, they're going to probably tell you, and if you tell them that do they know that they are paying the taxes on this thing, they're going to be like, hell no. Yes, they are. <laughs> and so they are paying the taxes with it all day long. So I want you to know everybody's in the game. Everybody's paying for it. And this particular office that I just showed you is the people. Now, reason I'm bringing this up for you, once again, the all domain anomaly resolution office. They, their job is to report to us, the citizens, to Congress of all, and, and consolidate all of the information when it comes down to UFOs from the Navy, the Air Force, Marine, the Army, Coast Guard, all of these people, because they're always acting uh, separately at some point. But let me point something out to you. You didn't hear them say a freaking word when those objects was out there. Why? Because they knew that it, it wasn't real. They wasn't real UFOs. Why would they intervene? That was their job. If they would have came out and said something, then we would have been like, oh, okay, all right, shoes. That's something to look at. But they are making the report, and it came from their office. And once again, let me get the headline for you, if you just now get in here. And the headline is the Pentagon UFO chief says there is a alien mothership in our solar system. Now, maybe I need to do a moment of silence. Maybe I just need to pause for a minute and say, okay, or are we watching TV? Maybe somebody might want to call me on my phone and say, Roderick, you, you. because I've seen a few chats in, in the chat earlier, like, oh, they're just making this up. Don't talk about this, whatever. And I only can say, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry for the people who are still in the dark, but walking in the light. You know, that's some crazy stuff literally to be in the dark, but walking in light <laughs> and being in there on this channel and you still like way out there. It's okay. I'm, I'm with you. It's okay. But what I'm saying is this is real as it get people. And it is not a drill. It is not a drill. Mark my words. Okay. All right. So what do we go from here? When do I share with you the big moments uh, that I'm going to be telling you in a little bit, but what I want to say is this, it's not unusual that we have, alien contact. You remember this movie, con you know, contact where we were sending out a signal, right? And we got a response. That is not stuff that we just, th they don't make this stuff up just because you see it on TV. Don't mean it's not happened. We had the movie alien arrival. We got an arrival. Now we do. We really do. You remember the movie Rihanna played in? How did those aliens show up? They showed up because they sent a signal from Hawaii out in space and they got a freaking answer. Okay. So we have satellite systems just like this right now that is sitting out there sending a signal saying, is anybody listening? Hey, you know, math is this, here's a recipe to McDonald's or now, you know, I can say eat green, go green and you know, vegan food diet going out. That's the part of the new family I'm going to be in somewhere. I don't know. Close. And that's my weight loss journey that I'm in right now. And you're going to watch me get smaller right between your eyes. So make sure y'all understand what's going to be going on from there. We even sent out a satellite Voyager. Voyager was designed to go out and send a satellite. Okay. A signal to space to say, is there anybody out there? And so where I'm going with this is, and I'm going to give you a little hint. We didn't have to send a signal for that alien ship to show up. We were found. Yes. You hear me? We were found. But yeah. Okay. I'm gonna get to it in a minute. I'm telling you, I'm gonna get to it in a minute. I'm, I'm gonna give you the data, the information you, and, and you know, if you need some, whatever they call the stuff you can drink to go to sleep and all that tonight, because I'm telling you, we're not playing. I'm gonna give you that information. In fact, I, I just need to find out. I may just call and say, Hey, and you know, Billy, should I tell him, you know, whatever, you know, it's just, it's, I, you know, it's, I don't know. Let me pause for a minute and give you a, a a moment to deal with what I'm about to tell you in a minute. But in the meantime, let's keep going. All right. So what I'm saying is <laughs> I'm serious. Y'all looking at me like I'm crazy. You're going to be like, all right, well, I give you this information. You're going, we're going to get to it. All right. So 
again, there is plenty of other things that I think would happen. Do you remember that we actually shot a nuclear weapon not too long ago in space at an asteroid practicing on a defense system? It was called DART. Let me, let me bring it up on screen for you. DART is Asteroid Impact Deflection Assessment. There was a moment that we practiced not, not long ago. We shot a missile, a nuclear weapon, sent it to space. It was an asteroid that was just minding his own business. And we decided to hit it with a nuclear weapon to see if we can knock it off course. Now, why would we do that? Well, you've seen all the movies, the extension and level events. There's going to be an asteroid hitting us, and the possibility is that. In fact, there's an article now saying that there's one going to be here in 2046. Go look it up. But that's so long away. We're not worrying about that. But what I'm saying is, could that have been the attention getter that was gotten when they end up, you know, shooting this, this thing down and the other people around saying, well, what? Because they, they did that already. That's how they came in 1947, because we were blowing up bombs and practicing these bombs. And so they came to come to see what was going on, right? So we did this again recently. Now, I'm not telling you this is what why they are here. No, I'm just telling you it's get better than that, okay? What I'm going to share with you gets better than that in a few minutes. But what I'm saying is they shot, or we, now I'm going to use the word we, we sent a missile up there out in space somewhere. And do you not think if somebody was sitting around out there and going, what are these fools doing? Okay, let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. All right, I'm going to use this cup. You chilling on your porch, you and your boo. So you can be you and your boo is you, okay? I'm not going to do no pronouns tonight. But you and your boo is sitting on the porch taking a drink. And you look out there on the front yard, and there's a big old ant pile over there in the corner. Now, these ants is now us. It's a metaphor for us. Is up there setting some stuff on fire. And you and your boo are saying, look at them fools. Baby, what are the ants doing? They're going to blow up the yard. What are you going to do? First thing you're going to do is fly over there as if though you the aliens. You're going to walk over and look down at these ants, which is us, and you're going to say, what is they doing? But they're keeping it up. You're going to make a decision, and you're going to say, you know what, babe? Can you go down to Home Depot and Lowe's and get something so we can take care of this whole colony? Lights out. You, you get what I'm saying, right? So that's what happened when they came to visit us when we was blowing up these bombs. So imagine now we're sending some out in their domain. And we're blowing up asteroids with a nuclear weapon. You think somebody didn't notice that? And then get pissed off to the highest of pissivity? If that's a word. But it's going to be a forbidden knowledge word today. So you, you're growing tonight. All right. You got a new education tonight. All right. So, but what I'm saying is, that's not what we're going to be talking about here in a few minutes. I'm just telling you how bad it's getting. The possibility is because we shot something out there and it got ticked off. All right. So... Now it's time for me to uh, do the normal, and that is to bring you up to speed. If you guys have not heard, we have the first annual Forbidden Knowledge Conscious Awards that's coming up, and you got to be there. Everybody's going to be there. The whole Forbidden Knowledge family is going to be here. There's two ladies you're going to see in a few moments. It's going to be there. All the podcasts, there's going to be, you know what? What am I doing? I don't need to tell you about it. Let me let Billy explain it to you. Hey, everybody. It's Billy Carson, also known as Forbidden Knowledge. I want to talk to you about a very special event coming up July 30th, 2023, the Forbidden Conscious Awards, the first annual event of its type. We're going to honor people who have been contributing to the conscious community for decades. People that you know and love that have helped you get to higher levels of thought and consciousness and awareness. And guess what? It's time to give them their flowers while they're still alive. It's going to be a live in-person event, but seats are going to sell out very fast. You want to make sure you're there in person for this amazing level event. It's going to be above the Oscars, above the Grammys. And guess what? You can help vote for the winners. Voting is available on ForbiddenKnowledge.com. And the categories are going to be social media influencer, podcast slash radio host, TV host, actor, director, producer, entrepreneurs, health and wellness, philanthropists, authors, field researchers, archaeologists, space anomaly hunters, and of course, a Lifetime Achievement Award. And you want to be there in person because I'm going to be speaking. That's right. I'll be your key note speaker that night at the Forbidden Conscious Awards. If you want to come to a mini conference, this is the place to be because I'm going to give you the knowledge that night as well as performances. 
We have celebrity guests performing. We'll have a halftime show where we're actually going to perform music for you. And don't forget about the pre-event mixer, where if you buy a box seat, you'll be in the VIP section, and you also have private access to a VIP mixer with celebrity guests. Shake hands, break bread, network, and then walk the red carpet with us and take amazing photos. It's going to be a night to remember. You don't want to forget this. And you help vote by going to ForbiddenKnowledge.com. Go to the Conscious Awards link. You can text in a vote for who you want for any category, as well as if you're out of the country, you can use the web form ballot to still vote for anyone you think is worthy of being honored that night. Make sure you hurry up and get your tickets because they're selling out very fast. I want to see you there. Forbidden Conscious Awards 2023. I want to see you there. Forbidden Knowledge Conscious Award 2023. All right, so you're going to be there. But here's the deal. If you find value in anything that we're doing tonight, and if you want to find value and do a super chat or something, just know that some of the, you know these funds are going to go to charity. Not all of them, but some of it will. And if you find value in what I do, then I want you to vote for Roderick. Yes, under the podcast radio host for the Conscious Award. Just go simply to the voteforroderick.com, and it's going to go right there to the same Forbid Knowledge Conscious Award voting screen. Uh, but just go to the podcast radio part. Roderick Martin is the name, then you know your name. Put it in there, and I will be totally at your graceful thoughts of putting me in there. So anyway, let me look at the comments real quick. Uh, yeah, there you go. So have anybody voted for me already? Have y'all voted for me already? Put it in the comments. You'll get a shout out sometime. I just want to know where my allies are, right? And Because I know I got a few haters on here. Y'all know that. I get haters, boy, like weekly. And I'm talking weekly with two E's, not W-E-A-K. Ooh, boy, them, they be here. But as I always told you, if you can hate me without knowing me, then I definitely can love you with not ever meeting you. And I'm going to make sure I don't. But the whole point is this, though. All right. So I don't see it. Make sure if you voted for me. I want to know if you did. We'll get to it. And I know we're here at this moment, and I'm at the moment that I'm getting ready to lay it out. We're going to lay out what this is all about. We're going to lay out the possibilities of why they're here and what happened. If you missed it a couple of years ago, why you didn't know what's happening today is the real deal. Okay, why did we put together a space force? Because what happened gave us the alert. We need to be ready. Uh, and I think we are. We, we get we ready. Our space force is here in time. I don't know about the technology, but we are here. So, all right. And okay, I'm looking. Somebody said they better vote for Roderick. I ain't seen no vote for Roderick. There's 3,000 people in here. Come on, two, right? I know, but that's okay. That's all right. We'll get there. We'll get there. You're going to love me. You're going gonna to love me someday. You really will. Yeah, I'm, and, and, and you know, and of course, Maria Carson is helping me with uh, my new transformation. Y'all know that, and that's Billy's sister, world-class uh, champion weightlifter, nutritionist. And and if you want to join a journey with me and, 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 and go there, y'all email me, contact at whythebigsecret.com, put you in touch with her, and we all can go on this journey together and get some of this, uh, release the weight. That's it. All right, so let's get down to it. What you've been waiting for. And uh, <clears throat> it's a serious situation, I think. I don't know about you. I think it gets real serious when we're dealing with situations and all of a sudden we went from, we ain't talking about UFOs. We went from, okay, they're crazy. We went from, now we have a UFO office and you paying taxes. We went from balloons. We went from, and now we can actually say they are here, which they've already been here. They've been here a long time ago. They've been in the waters and everything. In fact, they're walking among you, all right, today. Seriously, seriously. But what gets me is we get a report that's saying that there is a mother freaking ship in our atmosphere. Not no UAP, the little, you know, the, the ships that's lying around. We're talking a mother ship. And if any of you have been a mother, you know what I'm talking about. Motherships carry stuff and underneath and they let them out. Y'all get that later. I'm not talking to birds and bees tonight. But what I'm going with this is, it's the real deal, people. And I'm going to break down for you in the next 30 seconds of why I think they're here. We're going to talk about it. We're going to get those ladies in here to help people that could be dealing with trauma, 
mental health, because in this particular field, mental health and trauma is a big deal. In fact, our government just passed a bill, money, to help all of the military and pallets that's been dealing with mental health and trauma because of UFOs, because they didn't have no help. Now they're getting some help because it is real. And we're gonna go over that. All right, so let me pause and give you the information. A couple of years back, uh, maybe two to three years, right before uh, Trump left office. Should I be whispering? Y'all can hear me, right? I'm doing it like I'm some in a movie in the daycare or something. I just want to tell you a secret. But <laughs> I'm going to be honest with y'all. Okay, I'm funny. I am funny. I, I really am. People around me will tell you I'm funny. But here, here's the deal. But this ain't funny. It could be funny, though. You, I want you to cheer about it because I don't want you to be afraid. So do laugh about what I'm about to share. But it ain't funny but just do laugh. Where I'm going with this is two years ago, three years ago, there was an object. Listen to me closely. There was an object that came into our solar system, just such as this mothership. And they noticed that it wasn't a normal moving asteroid looking rock. This is a true story. I'm not making this up. Okay. I'm telling you, I'm not making it up. And it came into our atmosphere and slow down a little bit. So we already know if it's capable of doing that, it is not a unmanned object. It, it, well, not unmanned, it could be unmanned, but it's not a, it's a real deal. Okay. Let me just use the word. My show producer will put some correction in there for me in a minute. Okay. That's my English teacher. But the whole point is that it can't, this thing, came and I'm gonna show you a picture of it. So you want to make sure if you see it again, take out running. But the whole point, I don't know what you're making it up. Don't run, don't run. Cause it ain't gonna do you no good. The whole point is this object came into our atmosphere. Okay. And I'm, and it slowed down our, one of the scientists, this guy, he spotted it, told the government, Hey, I see something out there. Cause you gotta remember it is a big, big ass space. And no matter how many telescopes we got, we ain't got enough to watch everything. So there's some stuff that can slip in and has slipped in that we don't know about. Okay. Well, anyway, this object comes in and it slows down, which we now know. And they use that same terminology in Independence Day. You remember they said, how do we know? You, you know, is it an asteroid? No, it's definitely not. Why? Because it's slowing down. Okay. It saw Earth. Y'all hear me? It saw Earth in went back. True story. Scared the hell out of everybody. Like what the heck just happened? Whatever this was, it saw us and it said, we found them probably. Or, oh, wait, wait a minute. There are some humans out there. Whatever it is, I, not humans, but there's life on this particular planet. And this is the article. And if I butcher the word, I want you to do some things. I want you to uh, pick a letter. If I mess up a letter, there, I'm going to give you a box of letters I want you to choose from. And this box over here is A, and this box over here is Z, and in between is a lot of bunch of letters. So if I mess it up, you put it together and you spell it right and announce it your darn self. But I'm going to give a shot at uh, Amu Amnur. That's what they call it. This was the object. Now, people looked at it close and they said, well, that could have been an asteroid. But once they looked at it closely, they figure it was some type of uh, alien spacecraft or drone or whatever. But whatever it was, saw Earth and all of a sudden went back the other way or continue on this course. And, and, and let me again give you a course of what it did. So it came around the sun and then it came. And these are the dates where we start tracking it back in July. So we saw this thing coming. And but when it turned and said, wait a minute, I see Earth, instead of going on its original trajectory, it turned and came around to check us out. And right there, ladies and gentlemen, is where we begin the process of doing this. We said it is time for us to put the Space Force together, ladies and gentlemen, because this is no joke. So I don't care who was in the office. I don't give a darn if it's pro, uh, Trump, Obama, Bush, whatever. They were supposed to do that. We paid them for that. When you see some stuff coming, I need you to go ahead and, and get it ready, you know, and, and pretty much. So they then got some nice 
good people who I am so respectful for to go out in space now, going to space, all right? They ain't out here marching in. They're going out to space to protect us later. And so we have a space force, okay? Now, this object, like I said, came around, and all of a sudden, today, it, 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 like I said, they said it saw us, it went back, and we've been waiting for this moment for quite some time, and now we have the headline, the mothership has arrived. You're not hearing it on the news because it will be hysteria. People will be running around like crazy. We will have all sorts of stuff going on if they was putting that on CNN and all those other places. They had to release it from Arrow because that's their job. And if Arrow told, didn't tell nobody about it and we found out about it later, all oh, they're out. they out there, right? And they're not going to keep their jobs. You know, you know what I'm saying? They're going to be gone, and it ain't going to waste a moment. In fact, I'm so serious. Had they not told anybody, we're going to be like, it is time for you to go. You damn right! So the whole point I'm saying to you is if the question that you're asking yourself right now, Roderick, is this – is this uh, um, what we want to call it, mothership thing real? My answer to you. You damn right, wise ass. That's your answer for today. Now, how do we deal with this? Now, we talk about it. We see it. I'm giving you the facts. Documentation beat conversation every day of the week. I'm not making this stuff up. It's sitting there. Uh, more and more, go look it up. It's there. It happened years ago. They already talked about what they thought it was. They already said it had unusual movements and it went back to where it was going to relay that we found something. Now we got our alien mothership and they're not, they're just, okay, it's in our solar system. The solar, it's a big ass solar system, but it's enough for me to be worried about, right? Or thinking about, we're talking about it. It's 3,500 people in here. Obviously y'all understand the interest of what I'm going with this. Okay, so let's, let's, let's talk about it. I'm going to get these ladies in here and we're going to talk about the implications of this stuff, right? We're going to get down to it in just a minute, but first of all, let me kind of get with you on a lot of other things that could be going. Could this disrupt our lives, right? What could it do? We're talking about, in fact, uh, remember the military the other day was saying how are we going to shoot down these particular objects? Do y'all remember that, right? They was talking about that. Oh, we're going to be shooting down objects and everything else. And, of course, UFOs. No, we bet not. We bet not. If the mothership just cruised by, let it go on by. In fact, just wave at it, you know. But will they do that, though? Do we have the technology to protect ourselves from a mothership? That member had all these little other ships in the movie Independence Day. They already said it here that it has the capability of, uh, you know, releasing these probes. I don't know if these probes are weaponized or nothing. I'm not saying that at all. But where I'm going is, are we capable of doing that? And what would be the protocol? What would be the government protocol uh, for these things? In fact, there was one by SETI. Let me make sure I got my notes here. And then it was at a time, SETI said that they actually had uh, some protocol if things was to get out. And I'm going to read all these to you. So we do have a action plan in space, okay? Uh, action plan in place right now. And they're saying that, SETI is saying that, number one, make sure that it's of intelligent origin. Now, we already know this mothership is intelligent because it, it's here, and it's got it's big. It, it's, you know, we, we know that. Communicate the findings with other nations. So they're already saying that we are going to now communicate with other nations. Don't that sound funny? Like some world, one world order or something that, that's the false flag side. We ain't going to get to that till later. Not tonight, though. But what about inform the rest of the astronomical, you know, uh, the you know the community that studies all of this stuff? All right, well, they're going to let everybody know. We, we're not worrying about that. Then they talk about discovering party makes the public announcement. That means whoever said it, which will be our government, is going to sit out here and tell. This is the plan that is in place that they would do. It's going to tell our government. And then they're saying is they're going to release it to the scientific community, which we already know is going to be a problem. 
And then they're going to have electromagnetic signals that are shared with the authorities. And then no one makes direct contact individually. And then SETI permanent committee reviews the plans regularly to make sure that this protocol is up to date. So this is the plan, people. This is the plan. Now, how is this going to disrupt people's lives? We're talking about 911. We're talking about people calling the police. We're talking about a lot of stuff. And I'm saying to you, this ship is up here. And if this thing really leaks out like a full-blown media, oh, my God. They're going to get a whole lot. There will be people running to, you know, hey, I want to fight for the country. We're going to do all this kind of stuff. You know I mean? We'll have people signing up more likely you know, for the draft, you know, it'll be all kind of stuff happening from there. Okay. So what I'm getting ready to do now is get the ladies in here. Um, we got Nikki. I'm going to bring her up in just a second. And, and uh, Nina seems to stepped away for a moment, but let's get Nikki into the stream right now. Hello. Nikki, how, are, how are you doing, Nikki? I'm good. How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing fine. Uh, I'm really doing fine. And uh, what about yourself? What are you thinking? What's going on right now? You listening in. You know, what you think your phone is going to ring off the hook with people dealing with some mental health issues if this thing really gets out there in the public? I'm talking uh, the wind of that we have a, a craft out there. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. As, as, as a psychotherapist, you know, my phone my rings, rings off a lot. Am I echoing? Am I echoing? No, you're doing good. Okay. Okay. So, so what's, what's interesting, interesting is that, is that um, you know, I, I do a lot of research, research the most, most recent research that I found, found is that 40 million, million Americans have some anxiety, anxiety disorders. disorders. And, and a lot of that has been from childhood, you know, adult life experiences, life experiences. and so forth. Added on to that, we have stress. And there's 83% of U.S. workers that are managing stress right now. So. With those two things in mind, on top of, you know, the latest and current information that you just shared with us, obviously, you know, there's a lot that we are going to have to, um, you know, deal with and focus on uh, to help our clients be able to manage anxiety and stress and, and the trauma that's associated with the findings and the information that's coming out now. So, um, you know, I, I think, you know, one of the things that people should do is just having that awareness and education is so important because... Mm -hmm. You know, you don't know if you don't know. So you have to, you know, be willing to, even if it's, it causes you a little bit of fear or stress to think about it, you need to be open. I say stay open to the possibility of all of this being factual and find coping, you know, skills and things like that to manage um, whatever's coming up for you. It's an individual thing, I think. Well, let me give you all a little background. Uh, looks like I got a little echo here. Let me see here what we're dealing with. Can y'all hear me okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. All right. So, so Nikki has 11 years as a psychotherapist, and, and, and she's a global life coach, speaker, and author, specializing in stress, uh, anxiety, grief, and relationship. She tried to pull some of that on me the other day. <laughs> we'll that a bit. But, oh, yeah. We can have a therapy session again. <laughs> I, I don't think they don't, they're not interested. We got some echo going on. The show producers texting. You want me to turn my mic off and see? Yes, let's see what we got here. What are you testing? One, two, three. Um, all right, hang on. Let me try to adjust this. You don't have headsets on because it's coming back through the head. I don't have any headsets now. All right, is it me echoing? No, yeah, okay. When all right, so what we'll do, any one of y'all just like Nina, uh, meet your mic for a second. Let's see what we got. Testing, testing. Okay. okay. That's where That's it was. Where it was. Oh, no, it ain't. All right. So, Nikki, mute your mic for a second, too. Mute mine? Okay. I already yeah. muted it. You did? Oh, wait. No, I didn't. Sorry. Hold on. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, can you hear me now? Yes. All right. No. Okay. All right. We'll figure it out. So, uh, let's talk about trauma and, and tell the audience a little bit, uh, Nina, what about you? What you do? So what I do is um, I help people to naturally reset their nervous system by helping them to naturally discharge the trauma out of their body by doing like a series of e exercises. Because okay. our bodies have the natural ability of discharging the trauma out of our bodies. It's just that they never taught us that. All right. So would you say it's fair enough that someone who's experiencing UFOs or 
extraterrestrial experience will at some point you know keep trauma within themselves yes because a lot of times what people don't realize is that when we hold secrets it affects our bodies a lot it causes us to have sexual dysfunction it causes us to feel really weak it causes us to have digestive issues it's 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 levels to it when we hold the trauma within our body so that's why i like doing trauma release because it touches everything and everyone because we hold so much within ourselves and then our system starts to break down hmm. so what would be fair enough for because there's a lot of people out there they're probably in the audience right now that have are dealing with trauma um Let's see who we got. Let me find out. We got a big echo. I'm trying to figure out how to fix her stuff. Yeah, eliminate that. Hang on a second. You fixed it. What about now? So it's coming from Nikki's side when she came back in. I, I think okay. I fixed it. Nikki, say something. I'm going to meet her mic. Hang on. Yeah. All right. I'm going to leave her. Nikki, I'm going to leave your mic muted until it's time for you to talk, and then I'll meet them out. Okay. Fair enough. All right. So uh, we'll get back to Nikki in just a minute. So, uh, Nina, so we're talking about stress. We're talking about people. And you said something that just shocked me. Sexual mm -hmm. problems with that? Are you yeah. kidding me? Yes. You got to think I'm about it. Like, time, right? Hmm? Ain't nobody scared when they about to do what they do. But anyway, we're not trying to sidetrack. But you're saying Trump <laughs> has a problem that, you know, and somebody said, okay, I, I'm not, it's not working today. And this trauma that they had six years ago? Yeah. It affects your body because our body keeps score of everything that happens to us. So if we don't discharge that trauma, those negative emotions out of our body, it begins to kill us and pretty much break our body down. That's why a lot of people have chronic diseases and have all these different issues with like um, bad eating habits. All of this stuff start, starts from the body, everything that's going on within you. So once you're able to discharge all of that negative energy and all of that trauma out of your body, you create the space for your body to be able to do what it's designed to do. So what would a person that experiencing, for example, this, this alien mothership is sitting out there. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a lot of people traumatized yes. over this experience. What would we, from somebody who's watching the show now, or maybe they got a family member, what advice or, or, or any techniques we can get them to some simple stuff, you know, outside of reaching you guys for professional coaching or whatever they're going to do, mm -hmm. But what can we give them today if this thing was to hit the news mainstream in the next few days? I would say like the best thing to do is be able to find a community like your podcast and um, Billy is very helpful for people because it allows them to uh, feel like they're not alone. Right. Mm -hmm. So you have this community of people. You're not alone. You got people around you that understand you. Even in the chat box, as I'm watching, they have other people that they can communicate with. Right. Okay. All of that is a is a form of releasing and regulating by just helping you process the, the fear and not holding it within your body. So when people have that sense of community, that really helps them a lot. Another thing I would say, just breath work, journaling, writing down the fears that's in your mind, write down the things that you see and being able to find people to share it with. The best thing to do is when things like this happen, traumatic things happen or scary things happen. The best thing to do is not hold it within you. You want to be able to find some type of way of releasing, whether it's meditating, um, journaling, finding a community of people, which I think you have a fantastic community of people, by the way, or even just talking to a therapist or talking to a loved one that you can trust that won't judge you. Okay. All right. I'm going to mute your mic and I will get uh, Nikki in here and see what we're dealing with here. All right. So, Nikki. Yes. Mental health. We, we already know uh, that a lot of the pilots in the military, they're talking brain damage. A lot of people dealing with a lot of mental health. Now, what I want to do real quickly is explain to the audience the difference between trauma and mental health, and then we'll tie it back into a mothership of aliens. Okay. Well, mental health, when you think of mental health, you're thinking of things like anxiety, stress, grief, depression, 
trauma is like Nina was saying, it's, it's things that we experience, anything that is shocking uh, to the nervous central nervous system, anything that's a surprise to the central nervous system that we have a, a difficulty managing and coping with and processing. And so trauma is almost like you want to think of it as a reaction to things that we experience and go through, whereas anxiety and grief and depression, it's almost like symptomatic from our experiences. So a lot of times, I mean, I don't know one person that hasn't had, doesn't have trauma in the body, you know, even an accident that is a, is a surprise to you is going to be a traumatic situation. So when we think in terms of mental health, it's the strategies, it's the um, illnesses that come forth after we have life experiences that um, are difficult to manage, you know, a death that's unexpected um, can be both a mental health issue and then a trauma issue as well. Um, so there's so many Americans that deal with this. I mean, like I said earlier, with anxiety, I mean, 40 million people experiencing that <laughs> is a high number. So what are we doing to cope? And, you know, what are the different modalities and things that we can do to work on ourselves to, to feel better? Um, All right. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, so um, were you finished? Yes. OK, so we're dealing again. We're, we're talking about aliens you know, stuff that people can't really fathom things that they can't really comprehend what they're seeing, what they're hearing. Uh, and we already had people losing their lid over balloons in the sky. Right. <laughs> now we're talking and, and, and personally you are into mental health. What do you think you you're sitting here listening to me talking about an alien mothership. What is your thoughts personally? Well, my first reaction is fear. <laughs> <laughs> You're in <Okay>. anxiety. <laughs> All right. I'm human just like everybody else. So I'll keep it real. You know, okay. if I were to see that in the sky, I, I probably would be doing one of these numbers myself. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Going back so, watching you know, when I'm working with people, what'd you say? Going back watching your old coach. Like, <laughs> right, right. Oh, like, what am I supposed to do again? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, so I think, you know, just being real with my clients, being real with people that come to me, you know, if anyone were to come to me with this particular issue or concern is that, hey, I understand, you know, I understand what you may be thinking and feeling and I hear you. You know, it's like something that you said on um, a podcast I did with you earlier uh, last week. It's like, if you believe, I believe, you know, yeah. so it's really validating the client and letting them know that, oh, they're not crazy. I mean, that's. I didn't see it, but if you did, then I'm going to listen to you and help you strategize to find ways to cope with that. All right. I'm going to get Nina back in here in just a second, okay. but what advice, give me just a couple of quick tips. If someone has a partner, significant other who just sitting at home and they're probably, let me get, let me put up a picture. They're sitting at home and they're, <laughs> they're sitting like, this. it's not funny. I'm not laughing. I'm just, yeah. I, Okay, they do look kind of weird. But the whole point I'm saying is they're like, I just seen or heard and read that there's an alien mothership sitting out there. What do we right. say to that person that's sitting right there? Well, if they just, you know, heard it or saw it or what have you, it's like, you know, journal it. Write down what you saw, what you can remember to the best of your knowledge. Share it with someone that you love and care about. Um but, you know, if that person is not responsive, you're in a relationship and they don't support what you see or what you have seen, right. then speak to someone in a safe space that you can trust, whether that's a therapist like myself or a coach and process that, you know, because if you saw it and you believe that it's true, you don't have to hold it inside. You're not alone. Connect mm -hmm. with the community, kind of like what Nina was saying. Find a community, your tribe that also believes or has seen and experienced some of these things as well so that you have that support. I wouldn't suggest that if your your partner or your person does not necessarily believe you or support you 100 percent, that that means the relationship is over. And, you know, don't be friends with anybody that doesn't believe you, because some people are not ready. It does elicit a lot of fear and anxiety and worry, you know, because it's that fear of the unknown of what is to come. And what does this mean for us as humanity? And how can we protect ourselves? Do we need to protect ourselves? So many question marks come to the surface when things like this happen. Well, all right. And then one last question for you for a second here. In your professional opinion, and this is from our show producer, is there a good way to teach our children coping skills for such an event without telling them about the mothership itself? 
Yes, I think it's really important, you know, especially as we're raising our kids to um, deal with and help them manage fear by communication and education. So um, children won't just be scared of a potential mothership. They'll be scared of just about anything. You know, if they watch something on TV and they're triggered, if they see something that they shouldn't see, you know, they don't really know because their minds are so young how to process those things. So it's never too young to or too early to be able to communicate with your kids and say, hey, if you're scared, if you feel feel a certain way, this is what you can do to handle that. You can teach children breath work at an early age. You can teach children how to self-soothe themselves. I'm really big on teaching even adults. How do you self-soothe? Is that meditation? Does that look like prayer? Does that look like being with loved ones? Whatever makes sense for you and, and makes you feel better. Um, but it's just being open with kids and talking to them about what they're experiencing. Um, sometimes parents don't know what to say or how to manage it. And so they just shut it down They say, mm -hmm. oh, no, no, you didn't see that. It's not true. It's not, you know, and that's not the right uh, approach. Um, give them they, they have a voice, you know, no matter their age, they have a voice and they are little people just like us, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. So um, it's just giving them a chance to really understand what it is they're seeing and talking them through those experiences, I believe, is the, the best strategy. Sound like they're, sound like they're gonna be lying to them because they gonna know they saw the mothership too and and a parent and mommy did yeah. I saw a, a, a spacecraft no you didn't yeah I saw a space no you did <laughs> no I saw shut up for you get and give them a whooping for something they know they saw because you can't do that mm -mm. don't do it you're not crazy yet. yeah All and right. it's okay if I can say this it's okay for parents to say I don't understand I didn't <laughs> see that I can't yeah. comprehend it. But because you did, then I believe that you did, and this is what we can do about it to manage it, you know. And then maybe connecting them with someone that um, can help them through processing that in the community that um, has already, you know, supported UFOs and and what we're talking about tonight. Well, we're going to talk about some trauma now. Hang on. Okay. <laughs> Let me get uh, Nina in here, and Nina, I'm still stuck on six <laughs> six year old trauma. Okay. We want this sex. Come on. <laughs> like that tomorrow. Okay. We'll, we'll get down. Uh, that. We'll, go, we'll go deeper tomorrow about all of the um other yeah. stuff. Yeah. All right. So question for you is yeah. most UFO uh events, especially in the past, have traumatized people as well as now mm -hmm. they I don't know if it comes in. Let me ask y'all something. Does it come in an order? In other words, you see this craft, you're freaking traumatized. But now tomorrow you got mental health. Is it does it arrive like that? Which comes first, the chicken or the egg? Mental mental health or trauma, in your opinion? Um, I would say um the moment the event happened, that's when the trauma occurs. Mm, okay. All right. So great answer then. Um, all right. So that's all it is. is the whole situation is just traumatizing, just being in that situation, that experience. That's pretty much what trauma is. Trauma is an experience that disrupts the nervous system, mm. whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, but it's just something that's thrown off the nervous system. All right. So I know people are probably wondering why you're here. Give them your background a little bit. Did we do that already? No? Um, that's okay. fine. It's still worth hearing again. So yeah, that's okay. Um, yeah. So I'm a life coach and I am a trauma release specialist. I specialize mm -hmm. in helping people to um, release trauma out of their bodies and helping them to have a healthier healing lifestyle because a lot of people don't know what a um, healing lifestyle is, but I help them with the tools, we'll provide them with the tools and the resources that they need to help them heal and have a healthier and um, amazing life. Another thing, um, I have a bachelor's degree in biology and exercise science. Um, I worked at a mental health um, gym for four years and I've been working at the hospital, Wilboma Hospital, which is here in Michigan for seven years as a nurse. So I have a lot of experience working with people. All right, so now y'all know, we're not playing around when we come down to this forbidden knowledge and definitely they have their podcast tomorrow at oh, what, yeah, eight what, nine o'clock central, 8.30 central, what time? Uh, 9.30 Eastern time and 8.30 um, central. And then Courtney's is at seven, right? And then yes, yes. So we have, we have a whole plethora of things for you all to to really come. And first of all, let me stop. 
good lord what the hell <laughs> have I done? thank y'all for spending the birthday with me the other day what what oh my God. Um, it was amazing we love you so much because <laughs> you're so funny you're just a great a great I told person i'm funny nikki didn't i i told you i'm funny yeah <laughs> Um, happy birthday happy birthday <laughs> they, saw, they you know and we ate lobster uh we ate oh my god man. we grew down you we forgot what I, I had the lady sing happy birthday to well say happy birthday oh, to you i, I pretend she i did, did. That I she did it. that she did that i heard she something and and i heard them say happy birthday over the speakers but i'm like nobody told it to me but i didn't know it was for me wow yes i walked over there and and asked her to do that yes okay. it was a surprise a special surprise for you yeah. So yeah. I would have showed y'all pictures and everything, but uh, it was just amazing. So once again, I, I appreciate it. So let me back to this detour real quick here, and then I'll get y'all out of here, and then we'll be on tomorrow, and we'll get deep. So real quickly, though, what are we talking about tomorrow? I mean, so come on, you break it down real quick. Well, how, you know, all the information that you present, everything that you stand for, um, your UFO experiences, the case studies, all of the things that What's we about me you know would you say it's about me tomorrow oh man. oh yeah yeah oh, and morning. how to manage anxiety and stress and just support people out there that um maybe this is something new to them being educated on um ufos and extraterrestrial um evidence and information and so we just want to bring more awareness to the public about that and then also provide strategies and solutions for clients that are in need um you know so because this is a real thing this is where we are so we have to embrace it and accept it as it is um it's you know knowledge is power <laughs> yes. Yes. all right so audience listen uh i'm gonna give each one i'm gonna do two questions for each one of these ladies i want if you got a question for nina put her name first then the question okay. one for nikki and put her name first in the questions two questions each I'll pick them up, put them on the screen, and let the let it make sure it's pertaining to what we're talking about <laughs> and everything else. Because if you do want a, a paid session, they do have a website, other places you can go and get deep. But in the meantime, so I'm gonna wait for a second. There is a little bit of delay. If y'all have a question for either one, uh, put it up and uh, we'll go from there and uh, we'll do that. So we'll just wait for it. It's probably about a second delay. Uh, somebody said they missed your birthday. Yeah. All right. Okay. You apologize. That's all right. <laughs> Super chat that baby. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, um, all right. And so far, I don't see any questions yet. It takes a minute though. Okay. Uh, and then we will, uh, put one up on the screen here. <laughs> Allison. Happy birthday to you in the meantime. Right. I, lo I love when I see this one. With the Billy Carson is great. Allison. <laughs> <I'm not> <laughs> Yes, we believe so too. Yeah, we love I, Billy. I, he is, yes, but I'm not Billy. In fact, I'm twice as man as yeah. Billy. I'm I'm a a literally, literally, he's literally not the other way. His brains, he he got all that. All right, so all right. Anybody got a question for these ladies? So before I let get them out of here, a some, real good show Sunday. <laughs> on yeah. They give me your shout Did out. Did you see that question? Which one? Do Which I need one? to my did trauma cause my voice to be so sexy? No, uh, I oh, am. Your voice? Yes, I am under oh. the weather right now. <laughs> oh, Nina. Okay, here's one right here. Let me put this up. Nina, um, how do we keep our ambition during these times? That's a good one. You keep your ambition during these times by knowing who you are. And you do that by working on yourself, doing like meditation, just constantly staying grounded within yourself. And by you doing that, you practice gratitude. And then when you have gratitude, now you have ambition. Now you have something to fight for because now you live in a life where you feel more thankful. All right. So for Nikki and Nina, will extraterrestrials invent create amnesia of our previous life? Mm. And I know what you I know where they're going with that. I can kind of deal with that one. We're going deep. Yeah. yeah this, this I would say, deep. yeah, for sure. Cause like sometimes trauma can like fall out of our forget. judgment, you know, like mm -hmm. Nikki can even go deeper on that. Like how trauma really pretty much, um, it, it causes it's, you um, to kind of block out, um, yeah, periods kind of, like, of time. There's memory. a lot of people that sometimes will, they won't be able to remember specific events from past or even the present. Mm -hmm. Um, so it, it is a possibility for sure that anything mm -hmm. like that could cause you to, um, have a mental block. Yes. 
Yes. All right, somebody's shooting a shot for Nina has a man. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry to put her business. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. Y'all I'm see sorry. that green ring, baby. <laughs> somebody out there talking about how you sexy dirty these type. You know what? That yes. is so sorry. Yeah, that's okay. funny. All right. Okay. So, all right, ladies, I'm going to let y'all get out of here. I really appreciate right. y'all being here. I'll be there tomorrow. Thank you. I can't wait minutes. to see you. Yeah. 20 more minutes. All right. All you right. guys tune in. Make sure you're, you're there. Yeah. yeah make sure in, tomorrow guys. Night. All right. We'll see, see you tomorrow. tomorrow. All right. All right love, you, love you, ladies. Love you. Love you. All right. So, we're going to we're gonna get back into uh, a little bit about this mothership a little bit before uh, we close out tonight. Um, there are some of you that really didn't know so let me start back over with the headlines i'm gonna do a re a quick recap uh if you didn't hear why i think the mothership is here i'll do a quick recap for that i can do all that in a few minutes so don't go anywhere but i'm gonna start over not start over completely but just kind of give you a quick overview several days ago there was a report in the pentagon the ufo chief says there was an alien mothership in our solar system um, and it was reported by the organization, which is called Arrow. Uh, this is the this was established back in 2022 uh, in July, and it's called the All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office. Now, I want you to know that this is not no clickbait. I saw that in the chat. No, this is true stuff, and I'm glad. And if it wasn't for you who put that chat message in there, I wouldn't be starting over. But I think it is worthy to do that because it's new people probably here. The whole point real quickly, and I'm, I'm going to condense this down, is that uh, we've been so out of whack lately over these balloons and China balloons that most people thought maybe the, the second objects was some kind of false flag operation, some type of test maybe. Uh, but now uh, we truly have something bigger. Now, you know, Arrow did not go on public record to say that they knew those objects was unidentified because they knew they were not going to even deal with that. But the fact that they come out and say this lets you know the legitimacy into what is going on, and it's coming out to the Pentagon. Now, surprisingly enough for me is this. None of these people are talking about it, okay? None of these big news associations is talking about it as much as they ran all of those ads, all of the news about the China balloon, and then the next one. It was all over the place. And you telling me there's a alien freaking mothership sitting out there and we we hearing crickets? I mean, true crickets. I, I'm, I'm, oh, okay, let me give you some crickets. So, you know, you hear that? So we're talking crickets, y'all. Crickets. We're hearing crickets. All right. So what I'm going with this is this is probably serious. But it also plays along with what I've always been talking about and always been talking about is the fact that, you know, disclosure. We talk about disclosure. People, I'm telling you, we don't want disclosure. We really didn't want this information. I mean, I was on a plane the other day when we went to go, when I went to go to Billy Carson's castle and we had some turbulence. I'm talking real turbulence. And had I got off that plane and they said, Roderick, because you want disclosure, this happened because there was a UFO that flew over us and turned off some instrument panels. What do you think I would have done? I would have walked back to Dallas. I probably lost all this weight. Probably took me three weeks to walk, but I would have walked all the way back. No, I'm just, I'm not, I'm into the UFO stuff, but regardless, somebody would have, you know what I'm saying? So now we have a alien mothership that's sitting out here. This is a big deal. So I want y'all to stay posted, stay in contact with here with the channel for bid knowledge, because I'm going to do a lot of new parts on it because I am a certified UFO investigator. If you didn't know and why I'm here, uh, I've hosted TV or not hosted, but been uh, featured in open minds on Gaia. I've been featured with George Nori show alien in games, which is on discovery channel. I'm one of the three hosts there Fox to be, I'm in a show aliens uh, abductions, Roswell 75. Of course, you know, Forbidden Knowledge TV, Black Knight Satellite. I am in uh, in that show that Billy put on his documentary. Also have an eight-episode show on the Forbidden Knowledge TV. Gaia, and then recently I was featured on Ancient Aliens. So I'm not just making this stuff up to you. I'm giving you the why I'm here, telling you this stuff, okay? I'm letting you know that you're listening to a trusted source in what we're doing. And by the way, it's also led me to begin... What you're going to hear in the future is called Project Black, all right? Project Black is an acronym for the Black League of Alien Contact Knowledge, all right? 
This is a initiative that we're going to start in the uh, not only the minority community, but also indigenous communities as well as out there. We know that stories in our community when it comes down to extraterrestrials, religion and all this stuff is disproportionately uh, and represented. It, it, we just don't have enough. But the main thing is to start the conversation. And so we're that initiative, Project Black, and if you want to be a part of it, reach me at contact at whatabigsecret.com. We're talking therapists. Nikki and, and Nina will be a part of what we're doing. We're, we're going to help a lot of people that's dealing with, especially in the African-American people of color and indigenous communities all over abroad, because this conversation is taboo. And now that this mothership has showed up, do you think some people who are deep down into religion is going to lose their mind if they put this all over the news? Absolutely. Absolutely. Unequivocally. Yes, they will lose their freaking mind because this is as real as it get people aside of them stepping on earth in a full force and saying, Hey, we're here. And so the fact that they suddenly put that out, slipped it under the radar just a little bit because they had to, because it, it's written in law that they got to tell us now, right? But nobody's talking about it. No one is truly talking about it. But anyway, we're going to talk about it throughout the week. We're going to get more stuff. So if you haven't subscribed to the Why the Big Secret YouTube channel, which I do shows throughout the week, uh, I have my own YouTube channel, yes, and it's Roderick Martin, Why the Big Secret. I would love for you to subscribe to the channel because you're going to hear some more stuff. In fact, Billy and I is going to do some stuff over on our channel that you're not going to hear over here, but you want to come over there and look. So you definitely want to subscribe to the channel. But in the meantime, if you haven't subscribed to the, the Castle channel here, make sure you have done that because there's a lot of big things that's going to be coming uh, to do that. So my thing is there is an issue uh, when it comes down to what we're doing here. There's a link in the description. Uh there we go right there. Is You can see it. That's the channel, YouTube, Why the Big Secret. That's how you're going to find it. Uh, Lonnie is the show producer of the show, so y'all can give her a shout-out as well uh, when you want to. But that's where it is from there. Uh, Peter says, uh, every time the government – I'm going to put this up right here right now. Uh, Peter says, every time the government opens their mouth, I do the opposite. Project Blue Bling, fake invasion to make Biden president for life. All right, and and so, well, either way, I don't do a lot of politics, Peter, because I don't really care who's there. It doesn't really matter to me, uh, and I don't get people worked over that. Uh, I just want to focus on the needle of there's something up here and when we're going to do that, and that was one of the things that we can do. Um, Rob, when you go back to Why the Big Secret Channel, too many folks on this station. <laughs> I know <laughs> you're talking about, but that's okay. Uh, we're doing what we're doing. I'm not going to keep you all too much longer. Um, but I want you to understand that this is just the first part of this. Stay tuned because I do Tuesday night show here. And we're going to get into this some more because I'm going to get some more backstory for you. If it becomes breaking news, I'll be doing it over Wider Big Secret. Uh, and you're welcome, like I said, to subscribe to the channel. But in the most part, I want you to understand that something is happening. I'm not telling you what it is. I don't know. Uh, all I can say is at this moment, we want to be careful so i'm gonna leave you with these words and everything and first of all it's been a plum pleasing pleasure as well as a privilege serving you tonight i'm roderick martin host of rod big secret youtube channel and hear by the grace of elizabeth and bisley uh, carson allow me to serve you here and as you see the other ladies the other podcast courtney you got uh, numb which is elizabeth and, and maria carson we have a whole podcast family every night of the week for you to give you some information and you're gonna start seeing a little more integration where we're gonna integrate some of these topics to keep you looped in. So it's a continuation of what we're doing. But first of all, I love you. I love each and every one of you. Uh, and I in, in, encourage you to follow me, follow me on my weight loss journey that I'm gonna be doing with Maria. We just filmed the first episode. I'll start on the nutrition things in the next couple of days, the workout regimens, and hopefully over the months, every Tuesday, you might come in. I may, I may give you guys an update because I need accountability. I'm looking for everybody to hold me accountable with love, okay? Because it's not only important for me to get uh, to get more health and better, but I, I can be better for you too uh, to do that. But in the meantime, all I'm saying is, um, you know, your eyes are useless. When your mind is blind, it's time to think why. 
We no longer want to hear about the narrative out there. We no longer hear about how things have happened because I'm going to tell you this before I go. Nothing. I don't care what it is. Nothing is as important as the why. Okay? You got to start asking why. Without the why, I don't know what to tell you. In the meantime, I love each and every one of you. And I'm going to bow out gracefully. See you Tuesday, next Tuesday, but also during the week. Come on to Forbidden Knowledge. I mean, uh, Wild Big Secret. And we'll do that. Good night, everyone.